A rally for Ukraine over at the University of Michigan last weekend. My father-in-law is very conservative and he attended that rally with me on Saturday. A few months ago, he was calling Vladimir Putin his man and now he wants to give money to any charity that he can, you know, to, to end this war. Natalia Kuyan Gentry, Detroit attorney and Ukrainian American, lending a voice to the yeah, fight, to trying to change war. minds. And so I, I convinced him and I'm sure I convinced other people, but the only way you can do that is by telling your very deep personal story to make it real. Gentry, a U of M history major, growing up steeped in tradition and culture. We played soccer together. We played bandura together, which is the instrument behind me. I had to pull it out. <laughs> Gentry taught others how to play. The bandura has a special place right here in Michigan. Here's the Ukrainian Bandurist Chorus, the national ensemble based in Metro Detroit. We've preserved our language. We've preserved our music. We kept it all alive. It's interesting because Ukrainian was my first language, uh, even though I was uh, born and raised in Metro Detroit. Dan Terlicki's in Chicago now, also an attorney, while bringing news to Ukrainian Americans through an online radio stream. Today on Ukraine Watch, I'm speaking with Hans-Peter Midtun. I know the true story. Hey, I'm just a guy, one person here with a laptop and a cell phone. He's talking to people from all over and inside the war zone. Uh, Maria and uh, Yuri, please, please stay safe. Please stay in touch. I know what's going on and I know the people who can tell the true story. And I'm just trying to magnify their voices. The communication and the direct pipeline to what's happening is different than any other war, you know? Vladimir Putin's never lost a war. He's uh, invaded sovereign territory four times. But I think that this time is different because of the social media. The world is finally starting to see what Ukraine is. Not that it's some dark Soviet you know, remnant. It's a beautiful, vibrant metropolis with history that goes back thousands of years. The last century's Ukrainian struggle with Russians, the Soviets, it's been ongoing. My grandmother, was an immigrant to this country. She came to Detroit in uh, 1949 after World War II. Here's Terlicki's grandmother symbolizing Lady Liberty, freedom, chained to a hammer and sickle. They organized, they organized their own media for the time. It wasn't a, what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm just doing what they're doing with uh, new technology. Ukrainian Americans can connect this war with history they know well and more of us ought to. We know about the Armenian Genocide. We know about the Holocaust. But no one knows about the Holodomir. The Holodomir was, it was again, a Soviet reaction to you know what was considered to be mild resistance. The Soviet idea is that you punish the people any time that they act up. The Holodomor, 1932 to 1933, an intentional mass starvation that killed many, many millions, mostly Ukrainians. So my grandparents, all four of them were young kids when the genocide happened. They were all less than 10. Some of their siblings were starved to death. The world did not know about Ukraine's genocide. You know, the Iron Curtain was real. No information came out and no information came in from the outside world. Now attorneys Terlecki and Gentry are networking with others trying to bring Ukrainian refugees to the U.S. Nearly 700,000 have fled, mostly women and children. The men held back to fight the Russians. But who else will fight with them? Ukrainians have a say. Ukrainians are not those who are the past Ukrainians, but who are the past Ukrainians. Your ancestors don't make you Ukrainian, your descendants do. So to, to every single person in the world who's fighting for freedom and democracy, we are all Ukrainian now.